Okay, this is example three. We're looking at surface area and volume this time of a triangular prism. So we looked at square based prisms, now we're looking at triangular. This is a <coughs> chocolate bar packaging. More specifically, which chocolate bar? Toblerone. Toblerone, yes. So Toblerone is packaged like that. Yes, there, there are copyright infringements, that's why it doesn't say Toblerone, but it says chocolate is sometimes packaged in a box shaped like a triangular prism. Calculate the amount of material required to make this box to the nearest square centimeter. So if we're asking for the amount of material, what are they actually asking for here? The surface area? Yeah, they're asking for the surface area. So in order to get the, first, the surface area, we can think of making a net, so in other words, folding this shape apart. So folding the two sides down, and then calculating uh, the area of each shape that is used to form this, this 3D shape. So <clears throat> the amount of material required is the surface area of the prism. The surface area consists of the top and bottom of the box, which are triangles, and the three faces, which are congruent rectangles. So first we want to determine the height of each triangle. So the top and the bottom this time, we're thinking of this, this chocolate bar box being kind of on its end. So the top and bottom, as you can see here, are triangles right here and here. And we need to calculate the height. We have the, the base, which is three. Okay, it's shown here. But we need to calculate the height of this triangle. So we draw that triangle out. We know the, the side length is three and we know that the base is three, so one half of the base then would be 1.5, and we create this 90 degree triangle. Using that triangle, we can solve for the height. Again, understanding that the height is on the left side of the equation, we need to move this to the other side and solve for h, which is 2.6. Any questions on how we found this? Tyler. I have a question related to this. What if they don't give you a triangle that has a right angle? Well, they didn't, here. This was the case, right? They didn't give us a triangle with a right angle. We had to create our own triangle with a right angle, right? Would this work for even a standing triangle, for example? No. They'd have to give us enough information that we can figure it out, the surface area, okay? <coughs> so we can see here that the surface area is going to be two times the area of the base. Those are the triangle bases. Plus three times <coughs> the area of the face. And the three faces are, we can see here, one face here on the side, on the right side, one face on the left side, and then one face on the bottom. Okay? Again, bottom looking down from this view, but it's actually kind of the side, right? You have to imagine this triangle is on, the t is on its, uh, is laid kind of upright, right? So the base is considered that little triangle, top is that little triangle, and then there's three sides, which we call uh, the lateral faces. Any questions about that? Okay, so to find the area of those triangles, we know that it's going to be the area of the face. It's going to be three times those faces. The base is three, and the, the width, sorry, the base is 12, and the height is three. So if I were to draw this triangle out, it looks like this. Three times twelve. <clears throat> Sorry, the base, the base, the lateral sides is actually just a rectangle, right? It's three and twelve. So looks kind of like like this, but actually it's just a rectangle like this with a height of three and a length of twelve. So three times three times 12. So there's three of them. Again, this area here is three, and this length here is 12. Does everyone see that? So you would get for a pi uh, parallelogram like this too, it would be the same formula, right? Three and 12, if it was like that, but it's actually uh, just a rectangle, yeah. You'll have more rectangles, yeah. 
Okay, so there's our formula for the area of the lateral faces. We add them up and we get 115.8. So therefore we round that to the closest centimeter cubed or centimeter squared and that's the amount of material. To calculate the volume of this box now, all we need to find out is the area of the base, so this triangle, times the height. Okay, so just like a cylinder, you know when we have a cylinder like this, we know it's the area of the circle. So pi r squared times the height. That's the formula for cylinder, right? So in this case, it's a triangular base. It's the same idea. The area of the triangle times the height will give you the volume. Does that make sense? All right, so we find the area of the base, again, which we found previously, which was 3.9. Okay, it's from this equation, 1 half base times height. Okay, so we're using that same information. And then we're multiplying it by the height of 12. So we get the volume of our prism here. 47, approximately, centimeters cubed. Any questions? All right, so the key concepts here. This is the things we should take home with us here. The surface area is a measure of how much material is required to cover or construct a three-dimensional object. Surface area is expressed in square units centimeter squared or meter squared for really big objects. The surface area of a prism or pyramid is the sum of the areas of the faces. So you could create a net, find the area of each face, and then add them together. That's what it means by sum. Volume is a measure of how much space a three-dimensional object occupies. Capacity is the maximum volume a container can hold. Volume and capacity are measured in cubic units. The liter is a measure of capacity or volume and often used for liquids. So one liter is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed or one milliliter is one centimeter cubed. Okay, we went over that earlier in the lesson. Very important, especially when you're dealing with liquids. Finally, for a prism, the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. So whether the base be rectangular, triangular, or circular, you're still gonna find that area and just multiply it by the height. That'll give you the volume. And for a pyramid, the volume is equal to a third times the base times the height. Any questions?